Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew for Aurora Gameworks and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today's video was suggested by Mr. Banimation uh, via comment on, on one of our earlier videos and he was wondering if we could create a loading and saving system for player location. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what loading and saving the player location means is let's say that where I'm standing at right now in our little tester level is where we start off by default and I go and run around the level a little bit and let's say I get to one of these platforms over here and I go and quit the game and then if I join back in uh, the game puts me back at the starting area uh, for the level. Uh, what we want to have happen is have it so that when we start up the game again and go into the level again, uh, we were uh, just where we left off. First things first, we're going to want to go into our third person character and we're going to want to add some variables. The first variable that we're going to add, let's call starting position and we're going to want to make that a transform next we're going to want to make two booleans and let's call the first one let's call it falling question mark let's make a second one and let's call this one save from landing question mark um, these will become uh, useful later as we uh, build our blueprint graph once we have our starting variables made, we're going to want to compile and save. And over in a empty part of our graph, we want to get event begin play. And then we want to drag off does save game exist. And you can have anything in your slot name, but just for this example, we're going to type in my save as our slot name. And then while holding down the B key, we're going to click and get a branch. Once we have our branch here, uh, we're going to have to go back to our content browser before we can do anything else. And we're going to right click anywhere in our content browser, go to blueprint class and under all classes type in save and you'll get save game. Select and let's call this R save BP. And then we're going to open it up. And then under variables, we're going to want to get a transform and let's call this our saved starting position. Um, a more accurate term instead of starting position uh, might be saved player position because this is where we're going to save uh, the uh, info for, for where the player is. So we're going to compile that and save and close it down. We're done with that for now. Let's go back into our third person character and off of true, we're going to want to get um, load game from slot. Make sure that the slot is the same. Slot name is my save. And then we're going to right click promote to variable. Let's call this r save underscore var. Var is short for variable. Uh, let's just quickly compile and save. And then we're going to want to cast to our save BP. Next, we're going to right click off of our, as our save BP, and then we're going to get saved player position. And then let's drag in our local starting position transform variable. Let's get set and connect it up just like that. And now over here, we want to get our player character. Uh, zero index and then we're going to set our actor transform and we're going to hook up the nodes uh, we're going to get here starting position into our new transform and we're going to check teleport if we go back to our branch here off of our does save game exist we're now going to do our false so we're going to drag off the false and we're going to create a save game object and we're going to have it as our save blueprint 
uh, we're going to get the save variable that we made earlier and we're going to connect it up just like that and then we're going to want to cast to our blueprint again now slightly differently from from the uh, true part of our graph uh, we're going to set our saved player position like that and then for the info to set it with we're going to get player character and then we're going to get our actor transform and then we're going to hook it up like that this will give us our uh, this will give us just our starting value basically and then after that we can set our starting position like that and hook it up just like that once we have supplied our saved player position with some starting info we can go and grab our save variable and save game to slot uh, make sure you get the same uh, slot name text uh, as you have for here and make sure that it's the same and put it into our save game to slot and then off of our return node from the save game to slot we can input that into our set actor transform before we can move on from here we're going to need to make a custom event so let's go up here type in add custom event and i'm going to call it save event uh, compile and save and now um, off of our return node on our set actor transform we can go set timer by event and we can hook up the two just like that and on our set timer by event we want to make sure that it's looping and the time that we input here will be will be how often we we make our game auto save the player position um, this will depend on what kind of game it is that you're making but i imagine that if you've got a a open world role playing type of game um, where the like traversal speed is somewhat slow you might want to set this to a higher number like 60 seconds or 100 seconds uh, if you've got a faster paced game you want to set it maybe a little bit lower um, you don't want it too quickly though uh, because you don't want the game being bogged down constantly with just non-stop saving um, for our testing scenario here we're going to just put in 10 seconds um, you could even create a new float variable later so you can uh, edit uh, how often uh, you want this to update so let's compile and save and now we've done everything on our event begin play node so now we can go to our save event so off of our save event uh, event node we want to grab a branch and we want to connect uh, get falling with a not node so uh, are you are you not falling yes or no just for testing purposes uh, off of false we want to get a print string and let's type in can't save is falling let's make that red somewhat red um, and then we're going to get save from landing question mark set that and set it to true um, so what's going on here is that each time we have our game set to save the the uh, player position um, we don't want it to save the player position if they're jumping over some crevice or canyon because if we have the player come back and load into the game we don't want them to fall to their death straight away so we only want it to save once they have landed on solid ground so now off of our true node we want to get our save variable we want to cast next we want to uh, set our saved player position and the info that we want to feed it is again just the get player character and get actor transform and connect it like that and then off of our save variable again we want to save our game to slot 
Uh, let's make sure we get the correct text again. Like that. And then, again, just for testing purposes, if it's true, which it should be in most cases, we can say saved or save location complete. And let's make that a nice positive green. And then our save from landing, we want to have it set to false from the branch false node and at the end of our print string. Make sure to compile and save your project. And now we want to drag ourselves over to the part of the graph where we have our jump node. Now we can extend our little comment graph here and under input action jump, we can get uh, event on landed. Dragging from our event on landed, we want to set falling to false. And then we want to just print a string for testing and let's call it landed. Then we want to get a branch and then connected to the branch we want to get a save from landing and then off of true we want to call a custom save event that we have up here and then we're going to want to connect uh, this to the uh, to the reset node of a do once. So now here on our, on our do once, um, we can uh, only do everything uh, afterwards here, um, only a, a, a second time after we've actually landed on the ground. So it means that if we add in set falling to true, because we've just jumped, um, it means that we can't infinitely just keep setting this to true while we're still up in the air that's why there's a do once here and then for more testing purposes we can do print string uh, i'm going to make it a caution yellow and i'm going to type in in the air so now so now once we've done that we're going to compile and save and this is technically everything already um for your game uh, but I'm going to show you just one more little extra thing. I have a a pause menu created from from the last tutorial uh, that I made, and in our main menu, on our sorry on our main menu button, um, between here I could set in some uh, code to make it that when we go to the pause menu and then exit out to the main menu that it will automatically save our, our player position right where the player is at the point of exiting to the main menu instead of you know where they were 10 seconds before or 60 seconds before or however long you've set the um the update interval so we're just going to get our player character and cast it to the third person character and then as third person character get the save event and then you hook it up to the code that you have um, for exiting out to main menu so you compile and save and that should be everything ready let's go and test so here we are back in our testing level and pretty soon at the top left of the screen uh, yet yeah, we should see our print to screen save location complete now if I run around the level a bit and I stand up here it says save location complete again now if I press escape and now I'm back into our editor spectating view um, if if we didn't have the save thing working as you saw at the uh, start of the video we'll just start right back here where I've uh, put the level starter thing um, but we should spawn back up here on the platform and if i press alt p we're here on the platform so obviously the set player position stuff is working um yeah and the, at the top left it said save uh player location again now what i want to test is so we're jumping and we're in the air and just then it said can't save uh, falling or can't save in the air but then the moment that we hit the ground and landed it automatically saved 
so if I continue to jump across these platforms and I land on this platform the save location is completed I exit out let's move over to pier and then if I do alt P I'm back here on this platform just where I left off now the only minor concern that uh, I found while testing this is that if you have it so that your uh, player pawn or your like character pawn is somehow uh, spawned in your main menu for for whatever reason um, you don't want your uh, character saving its position data while it's in the main menu because then it's going to give you some really bad position number that won't correspond uh, to this level at all um, so perhaps in the future i might make another tutorial that sort of uh, uh expands on this and it could possibly even work well not possibly it will <laughs> work between uh level transitions um but only if the code is added to um sort of tell the player what level that they're in and then saving that position data just for that specific level uh but anyways guys that's uh pretty much it for this video uh so today we learned that um we can make a simple uh player position saving and loading system uh that can be easily expanded upon uh to work with multiple levels and all that stuff so if this video was helpful for you make sure to give a like and uh comment if you need any help and subscribe for future tutorials i've been andrew for aurora gameworks and i'll see you in the next one take care guys